two-hour trip between Tambolaka Airport and Namboya, where the Pasola takes place. That is, if we go straight. Instead, we chose to take a few pit stops. First, some off-the-beaten-track waterfalls we'd heard about and wanted to explore. Rice paddies isn't the first image that comes to our mind when we think about Sumba. We are surprised to find them, and even more to see a waterfall nestled in between. Wakota Katura waterfalls offer a different mood from the overall island. From there, we drive to Waro Waro village, a few minutes away from our destination. On both sides of the road, there's a graveyard. Sumba is maybe the last surviving megalithic culture on the planet. Huge blocks of stone, weighing up to 20 tons, are cut and dragged great distances to the mortuary grounds to construct mausoleums for the rich and the nobility. Though it keeps a traditional flavor, Waro Waro features a paved road electricity and 4G internet coverage. A Pasola warrior arrives. Like many others from far away, he came in his own horse and will spend the night in this nearby village before the main event. A few buffalo skulls and pig jaws draw our attention. They are kept in memory of past celebrations. Those animals were slaughtered in funerals. <laughs> Villagers are happy to show us how ikats are woven. They are used in communal celebrations and offered in special occasions. Now they are marketed as souvenirs. <laughs> Also, they showed us the island's hobby, beetle nut chewing. It produces a mild numbness, though with time, it also paralyzes some face muscles and blackens the teeth. A few more shots and our visit was over. The Ratus, chaymans or religious leaders, had spent the night at the beach and prepare for the ceremony at dawn. Early morning the Pasola warriors arrive and do a short enacting of what's to come later. The Pasola had officially started, though it will really happen on a nearby field. Dozens of horsemen and thousands of attendants. Two teams take turns at galloping towards each other while throwing hand-carved spears. The intensity and accuracy of the attacks push the other team back. Some will fall, some most likely get hurt, though deaths are now uncommon. Blood spilling is, however, auspicious for the upcoming crops.
After some hours, one team is finally declared victorious. The decision is often disputed and riots occur, but not this time. It all ends peacefully and everyone is back home.